if you've gone into a store looking for CoQ10, then you may have noticed there's a few different types. Ubiquinone, ubiticarinone, and ubiquinol. In today's video, we're gonna explore the differences, find out which one's better, and how to take it. Let's get into it. CoQ10, short for coenzyme Q10, is a fat-soluble antioxidant produced by all living organisms, including animals, bacteria, and humans. It can be obtained from the diet, but it is also produced by the human body. It is needed by our body to convert food into energy. As we age, our ability to produce CoQ10 decreases, particularly if we have certain conditions such as heart disease. CoQ10 supplementation may be beneficial in conditions such as heart failure, fertility, headaches, brain health, energy, skin aging, and exercise recovery. If you pick up a bottle of CoQ10, it will probably have the words CoQ10 listed on the front, but it may also have the words ubiquinol, ubiticarinone, or ubiquinone. There are really only two types of CoQ10, ubiquinone and ubiticarinone. These are the same thing, just with different names. And ubiquinol. Let's go through five differences. Ubiquinone is the naturally occurring oxidized form and ubiquinol is the reduced form. Absorption seems to vary a lot depending on the person. Some small studies have found ubiquinol to be better absorbed than ubiquinone, particularly in older patients. Ubiquinone is more stable and easier to manufacture, whereas ubiquinol is less stable. Which brings us to the cost. Ubiquinol is more expensive expensive than ubiquinone due to it being more difficult to manufacture and most clinical studies on CoQ10 have used the form ubiquinone. Many companies will claim that ubiquinol is the bioactive form therefore is better but the answer is slightly more complex than that. The term ubiquinol being bioactive is not quite correct as ubiquinone and ubiquinol are constantly being interconverted in the body. So even if you take ubiquinol orally it's going to be converted back and forth into ubiquinone anyway before it eventually gets absorbed as ubiquinol. Now efficiency in converting between the two different forms decreases as we get older and in advanced disease processes. So the answer to which one you should use depends on a number of factors. If you're young and healthy, then it probably doesn't matter which one you take. If you're older and have health problems, then it may be more beneficial to take the ubiquinol form. But it's also worth considering the price as ubiquinol is more expensive. Instead of asking which is better between ubiquinol and ubiquinone, the more important question to ask is what methods are used by the company to increase bioavailability. CoQ10 is a fat soluble substance with less than 5% getting absorbed from the gut. Most companies will formulate their products in a way that increases absorption. Some techniques include crystal dispersion processes, which changes the shape of the CoQ10 crystals, micro encapsulation, which is when the tiny particles are surrounded by a special coating, and adding oil carriers such as soy lecithin in Soft gels. I'll include a link below if you want to know of any products with superior absorption. If you prefer to take your supplements as a powder, make sure you don't just buy a dry powder unless it's been micro encapsulated to increase water solubility. Doses of CoQ10 range from 30 mg to 1200 mg per day, depending on what you're taking it for. The higher the dose of CoQ10 you take, the less that gets absorbed, particularly if you're taking over 300 mg per day. So if you can split the doses during the day, it's always better to do this. Since CoQ10 is fat soluble, it's best to take it with a fatty meal to increase absorption. So that comes to the end of the video. If you found anything useful in this video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.